Hey everybody, welcome to Cooking with James. I am your host, James. Today, we're not gonna be actually be cooking, but we're gonna do a video on the Ninja Speedy. I'm going to explain the settings and the functions and how they work because they are pretty much all different. There's different things to them and um, how I use them and you know what you should use them for. And hopefully this video helps you out. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so here we are at the Ninja Speedy. First of all, I just wanna say this machine, I've had it for, I don't know, four, five, six months, whatever it's been. I use it probably three or four times out of the week. It's it's amazing from all, just all kinds of stuff. But let's go ahead and kind of get into it. So first thing I wanna do is open this up. I just wanna show you kind of, you know, what it comes with here, which is um, inside is the uh, little roaster pan. And then this, the um, regular, that it comes with now what I also want to show you is right here is the bottom heating element okay so it has a heating element on top like a coil and then the bottom there's a heating element down here as well it's almost like a crock pot or something like that so there's two heating elements one here and then one up top which you can see over here and the fan is right behind this heating element over there so that's important to know because that's kind of going to give you the understanding of how these um, different functions work. So um, we're gonna go ahead and just set this stuff back in here and go to the first thing over here, the first setting over here, which is going to be, well, let's go ahead and turn it on. Uh, let me get you down here. And actually I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see the different functions. So let's go ahead and zoom in. And so we're gonna go ahead and switch this over to the rapid cook side okay so the first function on the rapid cook side is the speedy meals which i'm sure everybody buys this probably because of that now the speedy meals is great now what i've found out by doing a lot of different cooks on this the speedy meals the first one and the steam and crisp i don't notice any difference between the two i've done a, let's say just say like rice and chicken this is more for like combo type meals i've done both same cooks on both of these i've not noticed any difference so to be honest with you whether using the speedy meals or the steam and crisp function i think is exactly the same now if you have a different opinion let me know but trust me i've done a lot of different cooks they come out exactly the same but how it works is when you choose the speedy meals or the steam and crisp you put your water in there and pick whatever temperature setting that you want so let's say um, you're going to do rice on the bottom and then you know, on the top here you'd have this rack but it would sit on the top and you put your chicken up on top. The bottom element is, I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit here, but, but the bottom element is going to heat up and the difference here or what this does is after about two or three minutes it's done preheating so it preheats really quick. So it, it starts with the bottom element heating up for a few minutes and it starts some steam then the top element kicks on and it starts crisping things up so this is great for um, i use that function for like fried chicken fried pork chops um, combo meals rice chicken pasta things like that so that's how that works so basically the, the uh, speedy meals and the steam and crisp function are the same if you have something different to say let me know but like i said i've done a lot of cooks okay so there's a speedy meals and the steam and crisp function next function down here is the steam and bake now this differs a lot okay so the steam and bake you put whatever amount of water you want depending on what you're cooking um, you know on the bottom and then it takes about 15 to 20 minutes to heat up now that's gonna give you an advantage on certain things that you wanna cook because if you, um, let's say you got frozen chicken or something like that, or you know something else, it, with the 15 to 20 minute preheat, it's still cooking and steaming. So it's steaming for that 20 minutes. So let's say you put some frozen chicken in there, it's going to defrost that chicken and then that top element kicks on and then it starts cooking. But this is also great, I use this for um, I, the pot roast, um, homemade beef stew, any kind of soups or anything like that, I use the steam and bake function. So that kind of gives you an idea. The steam and crisp gives you a couple of minutes. Like the other thing I like to use the steam and crisp for is 
if you have um, vegetables and something that cooks really quick, like let's say fish. You put all your vegetables in there, you put the fish right on top of it and turn it on and it starts steaming and heats up and it starts crisping everything immediately. The steam and bake is going to give you, you know, 15 to 20 minutes of steam before that top element uh, kicks on and starts actually baking. Okay, so that's the difference of those first two and then the steam and bake. Now the next one is steam. This is pretty self-explanatory. You just put your water in there, you put your vegetables, wh whatever you want to steam. And this actually goes up to, you know, however many minutes you want, but it just steams. That's it. It only uses the bottom element um, in here. The, the, the top element does not turn on, so it just steams. So if you want to steam, let's say some shrimp or just some vegetables or just some, anything you want to steam, that's all it does. It doesn't cook from the top. It just steams. Okay. Now, the next setting is called proof. Um, I don't make my own bread. Um, actually, I've never even tried, but proofing, um, it usually is for bread. So you get your dough, you make your dough, you get your loaf, you put it in here, and then you pick whatever temperature, I think it goes to 105, I think, yeah, so 105. So between 90 degrees and 105, so you form your loaf, you put it inside, and then you let it sit for you know, as long as it takes, actually, until it rises, until the dough has risen to its fullest, and after it's done rising, then you would take it out, and then you would bake it, or you can actually bake it in here as well. So. Proofing. Um, I don't know what else to prove besides bread, but that is what the proof function is for. So we're gonna close this down again, and we're gonna uh, the switch up here. Switch it over to the air fryer side. So we're on air fry, and this temperature actually goes up to you know 400, whatever time you want. But so the air fry. Now this gets a little interesting because the Ninja actually has with the fan has i believe it doesn't say anywhere but i've listened to it i think there's three different speeds on the fan that blows the air around okay now the air fry function uses the second highest and the very highest fan speeds to cook your food and it just it gets that uh, air going really fast and the air fry is you know anything from frozen foods to you know, chicken wings or anything that you want to cook really fast um, you can use air fry for you could, you could do steaks if you want um, but you could do steaks on a lot of these other functions as well but air fry is just the uh, whatever temperature you pick but the fan is blowing a lot harder okay that's how the air fry function works <laughs> next function is bake and roast and this is interesting also because I actually did bake a cake and I was listening one day and so what this does, whatever te temperature you pick, doesn't matter, is this uses the bottom two level levels of fans. So when you turn it on the uh, bake slash roast, when you're cooking, you'll barely hear the fan at all. The fan will just barely be going and then It'll kick up just a little bit for a few seconds, and then it'll calm back down. So like on the air fry, it's just pumping that air hard, hard. With the bake and roast, very slow air, and it goes between the lowest setting and the medium setting, and you can hear it kick on. Like you can barely hear it, and it'll go up just a little bit, and then come back down to even that heat out. But you know, you could bake your cakes, your cook, anything that you can bake in the oven, that will fit in this Ninja, you can bake in here. And it does a great job. Actually, I did a chocolate cake and it turned out perfect. Absolutely perfect. So that's how you use the bake function. Now, broil, this is the, um, the only setting where you can actually get really hot. You can go up to 450 degrees and it's going to use just the top element. It does not use the bottom element at all. So with broil, um, you know, whatever you want to broil. Now you can, a steak, let's say, you know, you want your steak done quick, fast, put a couple of steaks up top, turn that thing on broil, probably get four or five minutes on one side, flip it a few minutes on the other, you got a nice medium rare to medium steak. So broil just is really hot. It's only using that top element. And it actually does use the fan 
a little bit as well. So keep that in mind, but not as hard as like the air fryer. All right, so the next um, setting we have here is dehydrate. Now, dehydrate is, is cool. Um, I just wish that this had a few more racks because the only thing I like to dehydrate and make is jerky. And just with having the one rack, you just really can't fit enough meat in there to make, you know, because it takes a while, you know, probably four, five, maybe six hours to dehydrate the meat. But you can dehydrate um, anything else, bananas, fruits, um, anything you could think of, you know, that you want to dehydrate, you can do that. And it's very simple. And it goes down to, um, I think the temperature is like, oh, 105. Okay, that's the lowest it goes. So 105. Um, if you're going to do like beef jerky or some, oops, let me go back down to dehydrate, but the, uh, the temperature, if you're going to do beef jerky, you know, you'd want about 165 or so to do jerky between 165 and 180, but I just wish there was more racks. So dehydrate is, uh, you just look in the book and it just, it's a very slow, it just draws all the moisture out and it does only use the top element in here as well, which is very slow, pulls the moisture out. Um, like let's say you put some bananas in there or something um makes banana chips apple crisps you know things like that so um i don't use it at all really because there's not enough room for a lot of stuff so but it's a good function i mean you can make your own seasonings like onions and garlic and things like that you can dry those out and make your own seasoning so you know dehydrate you could you know definitely use that as well um now the next function down here is going to be sear slash saute now i actually tempt this um i only use it on high because it only goes to about the the bottom and this only uses the bottom element as a matter of fact you actually when you're using the sear and saute function you would have this open you would have this out and you would just be using it with the uh, with the pan down here. And it gets to about 180 degrees or so, but you put your butter, whatever you want to sear or saute, you just put that in there, and then you uh, use that with the lid open on the Ninja. And it just, you know, sears whatever you want, a steak. Actually, I use this for uh, when I'm doing my rice. I'll uh, put some rice in here, sear it, then add my water, and then add my food on top. So. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory, but it does not get that hot because um, I did have a, an idea. I wanted to actually put oil in here and try to <laughs> fry some chicken, but it doesn't get that hot, about 180 degrees or so. But, you know, fairly simple, sear and saute. Uh, so the next function down here, um, which I'm sure everybody knows, is the slow cook function, okay? That's crock pot. That's what that is. And you have your different, uh, for temperatures, I think it's just low or high. Yep, so you have, oh, actually, there's one more too. So you have buffet, you have low, and you have high. Okay, so let's start with high. So high is gonna be, like on your regular crock pot, four to six hours, it'll be done. Um, the low function is gonna be more from the six to 10 hour range. And then buffet, that just keeps it warm. So after it's done, and it actually doesn't have to be after you know you're done with your using this. You can use this function for anything. If you want to hold some, um, I don't know, cheese dip or beans or whatever in here, this will just keep it warm for a very long time. You know, you just close the lid and it keeps it warm. That's on uh, buffet. So slow cook, honestly, I don't really use it on this because with the other functions, especially with the steam and bake function, it cooks everything so much faster. Like when I did my uh, my pot roast, I used steam and, uh, steam and bake. It only took about 50, well, between 50 minutes to an hour to get it all done. And it was juicy and it was tender versus if you use the slow cook function, it's going to be four to six hours, you know, minimum. But, you know, that's also good if you want to go to work, put it on the slow cook, you know, put your chicken in here, put whatever, let's say you're making enchiladas or shredded chicken or pot roast, whatever you want to slow cook anything. And then, you know, when you get home, you want to have a nice warm meal. So it's basically a crock pot as well as all of these other functions as well. I just, um, I just don't use it that much because these other functions um, kind of take the place of that. Like I said, unless you want to have something for a long time or you want to keep it warm and use the buffet function as well and this actually is only using the bottom 
element. <coughs> Take this out. So just the bottom element, but obviously you'd use this to cook the pot roast in, but it's only using the bottom element to uh, cook that. Now, the last function um, is interesting. Um, it's actually called sous vide, and I've only used it a couple of times. Um, I got a lot of friends that actually have sous vide machines. And what this is, now to use this, you do have to have a, uh, they call them food savers or vacuum seal, you know, where you suck all the air out and seal it up. You're gonna need one of those to use this sous vide function, okay? And basically how this works, you fill the pot here with water, um, probably about three quarters of the way up top or so. And then you take whatever your um, meat or vegetables, whatever you want, um, that is vacuum sealed, and you stick it in the water, you pick whatever temperature. Now, this is kind of, this is a good thing about this. And actually it does make some very juicy meat. Like let's use a steak for an example. Whatever temperature you like your steak at, I like mine right around 130, which is about a medium rare, you know, 125 to 130, I consider medium rare. But you would pick uh, whatever temperature you want. Oops, temperature. So um, I would pick 130. And it goes up to, I think, 190, I believe. Yeah, so 190. So actually, if you, if you wanted to sous vide a, like a pot roast or something, that would be great. Throw it in there. It does take a very long time, though. So what this does is the water comes to whatever temperature you have picked here. So let's say we have a steak, and we're going to do 130 degrees, is that water is not going to get over 130 degrees. It's going to stay that temperature and it builds very slowly, but it will not go over 130 degrees. You know, maybe a degree or two over, but it sticks there. So when it's done here, when you take it out, it's actually cooked, but this is how I like to use sous vide. I actually will uh, fill it with water, throw, uh, I love the steaks with the sous vide, or chicken too, chicken breast, really good. But you know, pick your temperature and let it sit for a while, actually probably a couple hours um, until it gets to, and, and look in the book for the guidelines of how long it will take. But I, it's usually about an hour and a half, I think is what I do it. And then it usually gets to right around 100, 110. Then I take it out to the grill and then just sear it off real quick. And it is very, oh, it's, it's you can turn actually a, um, like a top round or a London broil, really lean, tough cut of meat. You can actually turn that into something even really tender. It's just a little bit of a hassle because you have to have the food saver or the vacuum seal to use this, but you could do corn and uh, broccoli and do, you know vegetables and whatever you want. As long as you know what temperature you want to cook to, you just do that, turn it on, let it cook, and um, you're good. So those, those are the functions and how the functions work. Well, actually, one more thing before we go, because I do want to, I, I do want to say something. We're going to go up top here, just to kind of show you. For this is also for people that have not bought the Ninja, they have no idea. Um, you know, the heating element up here, the fans right behind it, and let me see if I could zoom in for you to see if I could show you the difference right up top here. So, with the switch, um, here it is. Okay, so here's the switch. Okay. The other thing, and it's very, very simple, and it's actually genius um, how they did this. There's a little thing up here, a little metal piece, and it has a little circle in it. And behind it is a big vent. I can't really see the vent. Yeah, I can't get in there. But right behind it, there's a vent. This is where all the air leaves. So the difference between um, the rapid cook and the air fry function. So right now we're on air fry. So this thing is actually open. Okay. When you go over to the rapid cook side, that thing closes and there's a little hole in here to let the steam out. Okay. Versus the air fry side where all air, all the heat, everything is just going right out. So it doesn't create any steam or hardly any at all. Okay. When you, when you flip it over here to the rapid cook side, it shuts that down and you only get a very small hole and that's why it creates all that steam which is it, it's a uh, it's genius absolutely um for sure so and that's what the element looks like and the fans right behind there as well so uh, but don't go anywhere um i got a couple things to say real quick um we will see you in a minute 
Okay, so that's the Ninja Speedy in a nutshell. Now, I would really love it if, um, if you guys have any further questions to leave the question in the comment box and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, and it was a real quick run through, um, and, but you can also look at the videos that I've done on the different functions. I've used all of them. I just have not used the proof one. I really don't see a need for me to use it. But um, anyway, I just gotta say that this machine is, uh, is amazing. Doing the two meals, doing the one. The fried chicken is absolutely so good. You gotta try that as well. The homemade beef stew, the chicken and rice, the lasagna, the everything. It's just a lot of stuff that you could do with this. And you can use your imagination. Now you know how it works with the bottom element and the top element and you know how long it takes for that to heat up on the different functions and then when the top element kicks in but yeah use that to your advantage and you know think of different things you know outside the box how you could use those to uh, to your advantage but uh, yeah if you have questions leave them in the comment box i will get back to you as soon as i can but if you are new to my channel please subscribe if you like the content make sure to give a thumbs up and drop that comment or that question and i'll get back to you as soon as possible with that being said we'll catch you on the next cook slash review Thanks for watching.